Right, in this video, we're going to look at basic transformations. And what I mean by that is we're going to take regular graphs of parent functions and we're going to change numbers in them. We're going to put a number out in front and how does that affect it? I'm going to put a number here and a number here and a number here. And we're going to see how each of these numbers affects the graph. How do they move that graph around? And so in our first example, it says, how does A, A and A is kind of like our leading coefficient. It's like our number that's out in front of our function. So how does A affect the graph of the function in the form blah? So what we're going to start with is we're going to start with our parent function. In other words, we're beginning with the baseline of, I don't know where to write this, of y equals x squared. That's like our, we're going to do a quadratic parent function. Now, whatever a does to the quadratic parent function, that same relationship is true no matter what function you start with. I can start with a linear function, the same type of movement is going to take place. I can do a cubic function and the same type of movement is going to take place. But we're just using a quadratic for our purposes in this video. And so in red, let's just go ahead and graph the quadratic parent function. So if I have an x value of negative 2 and I square it, that would be negative 2 squared, which is 4. Negative 1 squared is positive 1. 0 squared is 0. 1 squared is 1. 2 squared is 4. Okay? And so that means if I were to plot those points, I'll just kind of plot them right here. Negative 2, 4. Negative 1, 1. 0, 0. 1, 1. 2, 4. And so this is what our graph's going to look like. Okay? I'm just going to kind of... Try to draw a rough sketch of our graph. And so this is our quadratic parent function. This is y equals x squared. I want us to consider this like our baseline. And we're basically going to look at how putting a 3 in front is going to change this graph. And then what if we make the 3 negative? How will that change the graph? So, so let's do the 3. So I'll do this part in green. And so this is like our a value. Actually, yeah, I'm going to use green because I use green up here for that. But uh, let's use that for our a value. Okay. And so what we have is I'm going to take each of these other, so if I, other values and multiply them by 3. In other words, if I put a negative 2 in here, negative 2 squared is 4, just like last time, but then I'm going to multiply 4 times 3. So I'm going to get 12. And the next one, 1 times 3 is 3. 0 times 3 is still 0. 1 times 3 is 3. And 4 times 3 is 12. And so what you're going to find that does, it doesn't do anything to the 0, 0 point. You can see that point stayed the same. But then look, that point that was at negative 1, 1 became the order pair negative 1, 3. It, it stretched it vertically up to this point. It did the same thing with positive 1. And then this, this point actually went off the graph. It went up to 12 somewhere up here. And so that's really what we have going on is it did this to our graph. So here's our graph of y equals 3x squared. And so what you, you hopefully noticed is this created what we call a vertical stretch. Okay, Putting a number there like a 3, a 4, a 5 caused our parabola to stretch vertically like we pulled it upwards like a rubber band. It made it look skinnier, right? And so that's really what we got going there. Now, what happens if I were to take a negative and put it out in front? In other words, what happens if I were to go negative 12, negative 3, 0, negative 3, and negative 12. Well then, okay, let's see what happens. So when x is negative 2, just to kind of reiterate, negative 2 squared is 4. 4 times 3 is negative 12. If you were to put a negative 1 into this function, you would get negative 3, so on and so forth. And so really the only change, it took each of those y values and made them negative. So instead of this point right here being at negative 2, 12, it's now at negative 2, negative 12. Okay, it's somewhere down here off our graph. And then this point, instead of being at negative 1, 3, it became negative 1, negative 3. And then we still have our origin point, and then 1, 3, and then 2, 12 again. So what, hopefully you can kind of figure out what I'm getting at here. What happens when we put a negative in front of that a value? Okay, the a value, well let me write that real quick, negative 3x squared. The a value does what we call a vertical reflection if it's negative. Okay? So um, that, that's really our main idea. If I had a 3 there, it's going to create a vertical stretch. If I put a 5 there, it would be even more vertically stretched. But if you make it a negative 5, it's going to reflect it over the x-axis and make it like this. One thing that I'm not really emphasizing here for the sake of moving on is that... I guess I can, I'll draw it on here in blue. What if I had like y equals one half x squared? Well, what that's gonna do is that's gonna pull our points 
closer to the x-axis and it's going to do what we call a vertical compression, okay? If that A value is a fraction in between 0 and 1, that's going to create a vertical compression. It's like we're squeezing it down from the top. Um, but yeah, so hopefully you can now see what the A value does. So I've already talked about this. A controls three things, okay? Actually, let, let's summarize. If A is greater than 1, okay, in our example, we used a three. That creates what we call a vertical stretch. And that's if the A equals like three, five, et cetera, right? And then we said, okay, well, what if A, actually, let's, let's jump down to what if A is a negative? Well, that causes our vertical reflection, okay? And then that would be like if, you know, A equals negative 3 or, you know, A equals negative 1 half even. Anything negative is going to cause it to flip right there. And then lastly, what if we have that A as a fraction, like that 1 half example I introduced at the very end? That's going to be our vertical compression. And that's if, you know, your A equals 1 half, your A equals point for anything like that. Um, so that's kind of our summary of how the A value is going to affect your graph. Now, let's do one more. We're not going to go through all the transformations, but we're going to talk about H and K in this video, or in, in, in this slide particularly. So, let's once again, let's start with our quadratic parent function. And so, I, I already know these numbers because we did them last time. I'll keep the same red for our parent function. We have 4, 1, 0, 1, 4. And so let me plot that so we can kind of compare what's going on. So, let's see. Okay, so that's our parent function y equals x squared. Now, for the next one, what we're going to do is we're going to take our x value, we're going to subtract 3 from it, and then square it. So, if I take my x value of negative 2, and I did negative 2 minus 3 squared, that would be negative 5 squared, or in other words, oh my gosh, that's a huge number, that gave us 25, okay? So for this graph, at negative 2, I'm through the roof. I'm way up here somewhere, okay? Let's keep going. With negative 1, if I do negative 1 minus 3 squared, well, that's negative 4 squared. That's 16, okay? So at negative 1, we're still way up here. Maybe, maybe, maybe we're on the slide now. Maybe we're up here somewhere. I don't know where exactly 16 would be. Let's do 0. 0 minus 3 is just going to be 3 squared or negative 3 squared, which is 9. Okay, we're on the graph. So our ordered pair, 0. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Oh, we're still off the graph because there's 9 right there. I don't know why my grid only goes to 8. If we do 1 minus 3 squared, I'll just do the math on the rest of these real quick. So there's my math on the last two. So we, if, if x is 1, our y ends up being 4. Okay, if x is 1, our y ends up being 4. And then if x is 2, y ends up being 1. Okay, so here's what I want us to notice. Okay. And this might be kind of hard to visualize because if we, I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you what would happen if we did more points. If we put in 3, and then we put in 4, and then we put in 5, here's what you'd get. You'd get this point right here, you'd get this point right here, and you'd get this point right here. And hopefully you're recognizing the pattern that's taking place, okay? Because this is kind of a hard one to spot sometimes. But what this actually did, the, the, the 3 after the minus sign actually shifted our graph to the right. You can be real careful because it's backwards from what you think. You think, oh, I see a minus 3. That's going to shift it to the left. But it's actually what comes after that sign. So it's x minus, and then this h will represent your horizontal shift. Since that's a positive 3 after the minus, we shift it to the right 3 units. Okay? I'll even write it up there. That's to the right 3. Okay? Now, let's do this last column. Um... What we're going to do is we're going to take our previous value. This is just our previous value from the previous problem. And then we're going to 
add 2 to it. So this 25 becomes 27, 16 becomes 18, 9 becomes 11, 4, 6, 1, 3, yada, yada, yada. Now, what that means is that this point right here got 2 added to it, so it's now here. Okay? See the point 1, 6 goes from 1, 4 to 1, 6. So it goes up to there. This point goes up to there. Then we have a point there. And then if I were to keep going, you would see these. Okay? And hopefully what you're seeing is that plus 2. That's going to just going to shift our graph up 2 units. Okay? It's going to shift up 2 units. If that said minus 5, it would shift down 5 units. But here's the moral of the story here. And I think I'm going to summarize this on the next slide. But this H value inside the parentheses controls your left and right shift. This K value outside the parentheses controls your up and down shift. And so here's our summary. H controls the horizontal shift. Horizontal shift. And to elaborate, if you had X plus 2 squared, okay, Actually, let's start with a let's start with x minus two squared. That would mean you're shifting to the right two units. But if you had x plus four squared, that would mean you're shifting to the left four units. Okay, and then k is going to control our vertical shift. And so this is going to be what happens outside the parentheses. If it's outside the parentheses over here, it's going to be vertical shift. So let's take our previous example. If I were to take um, like x minus, uh, actually let's just do like, yeah, let's keep my previous one, x minus 2 squared. But then I added a 5. That means you went to the right. That means you went to the right 2 for the horizontal shift. But then you went up. 5, okay, for a particular function. If I took some different function called g of x, and let's say I took my, well, we've been dealing with the quadratic function this whole time, so let's keep going with that. If I were to go x plus 7 squared minus 1, what you'd have is you would go to the left 7 and down 1. Okay, so hopefully in this video, we didn't really address the b value, that'll be addressed in a later video, but hopefully you know what A, H, and K stand for. We have done everything in this video with a quadratic. We did it with a, a parabola, but the same transformations would be true if I did like a, um, let's say I had like a, cu a cubic function. The same numbers would be true. The same, the same changes to the equation would shift it right, left. It would stretch it, so on and so forth. Same thing would be true if you took an absolute value function. Any of your parent functions that you take and you start changing the numbers in this structure is going to follow these patterns right here.